For images like this, we can make use of Lightroom's masking tools to work on lights and shadows and thus giving the image more depth. As always, if you want to follow along this tutorial, feel free to download the RAW file from the link in the description of the video and now let's begin. As always, we are going to start with basic adjustments to get the basic exposure right. In this case, that means I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape just to push the saturation of the image a little bit. Then I'm going to drop the highlights all the way down. This doesn't do much, but we will get a little more detail in the sky because otherwise it might be a bit too bright. I'm also going to bring up the shadows. At first, of course, this will lessen the contrast as you can see, but at this stage of the editing, we're just setting up the basic tonal adjustments. These are very important to later on apply the masking without issues. So now that we have raised the shadows, I'm also going to raise the whites. This will just push the histogram more towards the right side, making everything a little brighter. And at this point, the whole image is looking way, way, way brighter than before. But again, don't worry, we will change that later on with a bit of masking. Now I also want to bring down the blacks just a little bit, getting out a little more contrast here. But that's pretty much it for the tonal adjustments. Now I do want this image to look crisp and clear, so I'm going to bring up the texture. And I'm also going to bring up the clarity. And then let's raise vibrance and saturation to make the colors just a little stronger. Wonderful. After the basic adjustments, you can see we have a much more vibrant, saturated image. The light situation is a little different as the image is a lot brighter than before. Now we want to work on areas locally, and that way we can improve light and shadows. So let's go ahead and open up the masking panel. And first I want to work on the shadows. And I'm not going to add any shadow elements for this image. I want to improve the existing shadows in the field and foreground, making them just a little bit darker to improve the depth effect. I guess we can start with the color range mask. And with the color range mask active, I'm looking for a very dark area in the foreground to target. So I would say let's try something like this. You can see this selection is already looking pretty okay. We can make use of, of the refine slider, maybe bringing it down a little bit. And I also want to say subtract and let's choose a linear gradient because I want to get rid of that top selection right here. I also want to subtract the brush and just get rid of that selection targeting the tree. Now let's see what we can do with this mask. I'm going to very gently bring down the exposure. That's already too much, but right around here, that's a good spot. And let me deactivate the mask so you can see the difference from before to after. So with just one simple color range mask, we already have made the shadows in the foreground darker. And by doing this, we're making the whole image a lot more interesting. The only trick here is to find the right point for the color range mask to select. This can be a little tricky, but let's keep on going. I want to further work on the foreground. We do have some shadow right here on which we can nicely use a linear gradient. So let's create a new linear gradient and I'm creating one like this following the line of the shadow right here. And I'm going to make a very, very soft edge to get a more natural shadow effect. And all I'm doing now is to again, just bring down the exposure. This time I'm going to drop it quite a bit more since this mask is not as precise as the color range mask. So we can do more heavier adjustments on it without it looking weird. Then let me create another linear gradient. With this one, I'm going to target the shadows right here in the distance. And again, I'm creating a linear gradient following the shape of the shadow like this. Now, of course, we don't want to change the highlights of the foreground or even the sky. So we need to further modify this mask. And I'm going to do that subtracting another linear gradient coming up from the foreground. And I'm making sure I'm going 
to get rid of these bright highlights. So I think that's looking great. Now the only problem left is the sky, which is also partly selected. So let's say subtract and choose select sky. All right, and again, I want to subtract the brush to get rid of that tree right here. And now all we need to do is again, bring down the exposure and in turn, make this area darker and add more depth this way. This looks great. Now that we have improved the shadows, we can also work on the lights, of course. So for that, let me grab a radial gradient. And the reason I'm using a radial gradient here is because I want to play around with the light being a little stronger on the left side of this bright patch than it is on the right side. So therefore, I'm just using a radial gradient and again, align it with the bright spot in the field. And all I'm doing here is to slightly pump up the exposure right around here. And in this case, we can also bring up the whites, adding some more highlights this way. And if you want, you could bring up the temperature, making the bright spot just a little warmer like this. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Now let's target that hill in the back. I'm going to use a color range mask for this. Let's see if this works. Then I'm going to say subtract, choose a linear gradient, and we are going to get rid of all of that stuff in the foreground because we only want to affect that hill. I'm also going to say subtract, linear gradient once more, and let's take away that part from the top. And once we have set up the selection, let's bring up the exposure again. Very, very gently, we don't want to overdo it, just add a little more brightness this way. And this looks great. At this point, I'm really, really happy with the foreground, but I don't like what's going on in the sky. So I want to make this darker as well. Again, we are going to use a simple linear gradient and cover the sky like this. Let's make sure it's only affecting the sky by clicking on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose select sky. This way, the trees in the foreground won't be affected. And now I'm going to bring down the exposure quite a bit to make the sky look much more dramatic. That looks awesome. We could even bring down the blacks a bit, making it even darker like this. All right. And I guess we're done with the masking already. Let's take a look at before with the basic adjustments applied and after. You can see the difference between shadows and lights is much, much bigger than before. And that's exactly what we wanted to achieve for this image. Okay, then let's do a little bit of color grading and I'm going to do this in the color mixer. There's really not much going on. I just want to bring up the yellow saturation some more and maybe even the green tones a bit because this will make the colors in the foreground pop. I think this looks great. Then let's also head into the luminance step. Here we can push the lights some more by bringing up the yellow luminance. And let's also bring up the green luminance for the same effect. If you want, you could also make the sky darker by bringing down the blue luminance a little bit. But I think I'm pretty happy with how this is looking right now. So we can also take a look into the calibration tab. Here I just want to bring up the saturation of red, green and blue just pushing the overall colors some more, but that's about it. And finally, we can sharpen this image in the details tab. So what I want to do here is to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key. And then let's increase the amount of sharpening, just like this, done. Okay, this is pretty much it, the editing for this image. I just want to clean it up because there are a few distracting elements and we can try doing this in Lightroom. So click on the remove tool and we wanna use the remove mode. Make sure generative AI is checked right here and let's make the brush a little smaller. And now I'm just going to brush over this tree behind the hill and I'm going to, and I wanna get rid of this line in the field back there. Now let's hit apply and see what Lightroom will do. Okay, this looks pretty good actually. So we are done with the whole editing process here. I hope this little tutorial on enhancing light and shadows was helpful. 
If you have anything to add or if you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very, very much for watching this video.